You spend hours creating amazing personal projects. You take hard classes, you win awards, and you craft an unbelievable resume. Yet when you apply to your favorite companies, you get rejected. Worse, from many of them, you never hear back. Sound familiar? Because this was me my entire freshman and sophomore year. I had no experience, but no one wants to hire someone without experience. But how do you get experience if no one is willing to hire you? It's a vicious cycle. Well, today, I'm gonna to tell you everything you need to know to get that dream offer. And together, we're gonna to build a Coda doc to track the entire process from start to finish. I actually have some history with Coda. I applied to them back when I was looking for a new grad software engineering role, and I passed the interviews and made it to the onsite stage but they filled up all their spots. It wasn't meant to be then, but it all comes full circle because they're the amazing sponsor of today's video. And all the timestamps are in the description below. So if you feel like you already know something, feel free to jump around. Preface. The first step to understanding the entire recruiting process is realizing the hardest thing to do is to get that first job, that first opportunity. Because once you have that name on your resume and some experience under your belt, recruiters will be coming to you. Sometimes you get lucky and everything magically falls into place but not for me. I had to get creative. If I could go from getting ghosted to landing six internship offers and 10 full-time offers, you can do it too. And I promise it's not because I'm smarter than you. I'll teach you everything I know. Let's get into it. Part one, finding opportunities. To get a job, you need to find a job. But there are so many opportunities. How do you narrow them down? You and more importantly, how do you find those rocket ship companies, those hidden gems, companies that define careers? Step 1.1. Pick a true tech company. Unless you're specifically interested in a very particular field like finance or animation, I would stick to companies whose bread and butter is some sort of technical product with lots of interesting complexity. These are the opportunities that give you the real software engineering lifestyle, plenty of growth opportunities and the best compensation. If there are less software engineers than salespeople or other roles, that might be a red flag. Not always, but it might mean that the company doesn't take technology as seriously. Again, to each their own, but for me, it was very important that the engineering org had a seat at the executive table. Freedom with product roadmaps and ample resources. Concretely, this is why I interned at Microsoft after Slumbershay. At an oil and gas company, tech is secondary, but at somewhere like Microsoft, Gusto, or Bolt, engineering comes first. Step 1.2, start with the big companies. There's a reason companies like Microsoft, Google, or Facebook employ tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people. They have huge market caps, amazing perks and benefits, and pay top dollar for talent. But don't forget about the other big companies like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, Stripe, and many others. And sure, these companies might not be as big, but once you reach a certain threshold of bigness, they're all kind of the same. Step 1.3, think of products you use. It took me a while to realize all the products I love and use are created by teams of people. And these teams of people work at specific companies. You know the well-known ones, like you need to book a trip, you might use Airbnb. Need a ride to the airport, Uber or Lyft. But even some of the smaller products you use are created by companies you can potentially work at. Like I used to use the Honey browser extension and you could work there. I mean, you still can, but it's technically PayPal now after the acquisition. Or I love the Venmo people and you can work there too. Again, technically PayPal after the acquisition. Damn, PayPal is really everywhere. All this is to say, think of the apps, products, and experiences you love and look up the companies. I'm sure you can find openings that fit your skill set. Step 1.4, follow the money. Venture capitalists or VCs invest in companies, usually huge sums of money. So you can check out their various portfolios and find companies working on really interesting problems in usually very niche areas. For example, here we can see Kleiner Perkins' current portfolio or Excel's portfolio or Sequoia's or Benchmark's and so on. And if you're not sure which VCs are reputable, a quick Google search can help you narrow the list down. Step 1.5, browse curated lists. When companies raise money, they make the news. They make a big splash and it makes sense. Media attention is good. It helps with brand, recruiting, and eventually raising more money. So if you keep your eye on the news, you can usually find these awesome companies. I'd recommend checking out TechCrunch and Wired. And you have all those other lists like Times Best Inventions or Forbes 30 Under 30 and whatnot. Just be a little careful with these. Sometimes they're more clout and advertising than value. Additionally, there's all those lists that shout out the most promising companies like Breakout List. It's actually where I found out about Bolt. And don't forget the product drop websites like Kickstarter or Product Hunt. These are where you can find really innovating companies, usually on the smaller side. Step 1.6, find special programs. At many big companies, there are specialized programs. 
like internships for freshmen or sophomore, or specific new grad software engineering opportunities. It's in your best interest to apply to these programs because they're specifically geared to people in a certain stage of life with less experience. Some great examples are Facebook University or the Microsoft Explorer internship or the engineering practicum at Google. And for all the VCs mentioned previously, they usually have specialized fellowship programs that can connect you to their portfolio companies. Some great examples are the Kleiner Perkins Fellowship, the ABC Fellowship, and some other programs like Hack NY. Step 1.7, ask people. You have friends, they work at places, they have other friends. Boom, you have such a powerful social network. Ask these cool people around you for interesting companies and opportunities. They can usually connect you to them or to someone else who can connect you to them. Now that you've found a bunch of companies, let's add them to our Coda doc so we can track the entire process end to end. In the description below, I've included a template, so feel free to duplicate it and follow along. This first step is pretty easy. Think of what you care about and make that a column. For example, most important to me are name, status, rating, contacts, role, and a couple other columns. You can go ahead and fill in whatever you know. For now, everything is on radar and you can set the rating as you see fit. Then you can add the role, job posting, and locations if you have them. Everything else can be blank. All right, now you have a list of companies you'd be excited to work for. It's a good mix of the big companies everyone's heard of, along with the smaller companies that create some of those products you love. Now you have to apply, and the online automated systems are brutal. They're only looking for certain buzzwords. So I'll show you how to get around them. Step 2.1, understand it's a numbers game. Life is a lot of luck, but luck favors the prepared. If you apply to 100 companies, there's a high chance you hear back from somewhere. But if you only apply to 10 companies, you might not hear back from anywhere. Bottom line, apply to a bunch of companies, even to some opportunities you might not be that interested in. If you hear back, great. You can use it as a chance to prepare in the real world for the other interviews you actually care about. And you never know. Sometimes you go through the process and fall in love with companies that didn't catch your eye initially. Step 2.2, apply online. This is obvious, so I'm not gonna spend too much time here. Just apply online, fill out the form, answer the same questions again and again, attach your resume and hit submit. Three reasons why you need to do this. One. Maybe you get lucky and it's not a black hole and they actually get back to you. Awesome. Two, even when you do all the other things I'm gonna tell you, you don't want someone to just say, hey, have you applied online? You wanna be able to respond with, yeah, I have and I haven't heard back. That's why I'm reaching out to you. Three, and no matter how you get the attention of the company, the recruiter is gonna to wanna to pull up your file from their internal system. These companies have very specific processes and if they can't find your file because you didn't apply online, you're just making it harder on yourself. Bottom line, apply online first and then do everything else I'm gonna tell you. Step 2.3, get referrals. A referral basically guarantees that your application will be reviewed by a human and 99% of the time you'll get an interview. Only one thing I'll say here, never feel bad about asking someone for a referral. Most companies offer employees cash or equity incentives for every referral who ends up getting an offer and joining. These can range from five to $10,000 per hire. There's money on the line here. It's a business, don't feel bad. There are two types of referrals, warm referrals and cold referrals. Warm referrals are when you hit up someone you know or someone you know connects you to someone else. And cold referrals are when you hit up someone out of the blue with no connection. Warm referrals are definitely preferred since there's already an element of trust. You can be really casual if you know the person well, just hit them up on messenger or text. It's helpful to send over the job link and your resume and let them know you've already applied online so they can internally connect the referral to your online application. For cold referrals, or if you're reaching out to someone you know less well, email them if you have their contact info or message them on LinkedIn. Rarely, a referral might tell you not to apply online for whatever reason, and their referral will basically serve as your application. Just something to keep in mind, but 99% of the time, you'll be okay even if you applied online beforehand. Just in case you know someone at a company, there's no harm in asking them before you submit the online application. Step 2.4, go to in-person events. I know we're still in the pandemic, so most events out there might be virtual, but if you can, in-person is always better. There are a couple categories of events. One, career fairs. Maybe at your university or somewhere nearby. Go, show up at the company booth and talk to employees and recruiters. And if possible, drop off your resume to someone, a real human so you can automatically bypass the black hole that is online applications. Two, tech talks and happy hours. Many times VCs and companies will host tech talks and happy hours, sometimes together. This is a great chance for anyone to show up, grab a drink and mingle with current people at the company. You get face-to-face -face time and learn some names. And don't forget these names because they'll come in handy in the next few steps. Three, and then there are so many other types of events from internship game nights to office tours to conferences. 
if you're in a big city, these opportunities should be plentiful. I remember when I was interning at San Francisco, basically every Thursday or Friday, there was some event somewhere in the city. Free food and the opportunity to network, it doesn't get better than that. Now that you've hit up people and gone to events, you can start filling out a contact list. This is a good time to jot down their name, email, role, and where you met them. Context of the interaction is important, so you can make your email follow-ups personable. Something like, it was great to catch you at the Greylock Tech Fair. Since the people directory is connected to the main companies table, you'll auto-magically see all the people next to the company. You can then hover over to quickly remind yourself of the important details. Since in this step you applied online and or through a referral, you can change the status of each opportunity to apply and put in the date you sent out the application. You can also set the last contact date to be the same date. Part three, be shameless. For some reason, in our society, the word shameless has a negative connotation, but I want to rebrand it. Being shameless means you're doing everything in your power to get what you want. It doesn't mean you're being rude or disrespectful. You're being polite, but firm. You're playing the game. If you've done everything I've told you in the previous steps and nothing is working, there's a couple more things you should do before giving up on a company. Part 3.1, cold outreach. All we care about here is getting the attention of a real person, somehow. That's all that matters. And just like you shouldn't feel bad about asking for a referral, definitely don't feel bad about cold emailing a recruiter or hiring manager or executive leadership. It might sound daunting, but remember, it's literally their job. A recruiter gets paid to hire people. They have quotas and targets for the quarter. So you're helping them do their job. And by showing initiative and reaching out, you're telling them that you really care. And that's a huge positive signal. First, you should try to get hold of a recruiter, hiring manager, or executive. It's easy to figure out who works at a company. Just search on LinkedIn. Look up some profiles and find someone. Of course, the bigger the company, the less likely they'll respond, but message them on LinkedIn regardless. Two, in parallel, check out the company's website. If they're small, there might be some generic email like general at company.com or jobs at company.com. Email this address and see what happens. Three, if no one responds, we're gonna send a more targeted email to the person you found at the company, but we don't know their email address. This is where you get creative. You know their name because you found them on LinkedIn or in a news article or wherever else. And you know where they work, the company you're interested in. So how many possible email combinations can there be? First name at company.com, first name dot last name at company.com. So go ahead and shoot them an email. And if you guessed incorrectly, your mail provider will tell you. Then go ahead and try another combination. Step 3.2, follow up. Always follow up. People get so many emails every day, especially recruiters. So chances they're purposefully avoiding you pretty low. Chances they just missed your email? Pretty high. If you've done a phone screen and haven't heard back, follow up via email. If you've cold emailed someone and they haven't gotten back to you, follow up via email. Now, there are a couple house rules of common courtesy here, so let's go through them. First, wait at least a week before following up again. And second, if you've tried two or three times and no one's gotten back to you, it might be time to move on. Remember, we're being shameless but respectful. Step 3.3, try again. At this point, you've done everything in your power to get hold of a specific person at a company. So it might be time to try someone else. Find another random person that works at the company and try to reach out to them with the steps we discussed. If you still don't get any contact with the company and you've tried two or three different people, it's time to move on. But that's okay, the company just missed out on an exceptional candidate, you. This is where the true power of Coda shines. You can set conditional formatting and formulas for specific columns. In this case, it's hard to remember when you emailed someone and when you should follow up. So I've set the last contact column to change to bold red when it's been a week since you've last heard from a company. This is your sign to send a follow-up chaser email. If you're liking what you're seeing, try Coda for free to supercharge your productivity at coda.io slash numbin. Part four, interview. First, congrats. You've played the game and you won. And yes, you don't have an offer yet, but you got an interview and in many ways, that's the hardest part of the entire process. Now it's all up to merit. You have the chance to show off your algorithms and data structures knowledge and really flex those technical skills. The process for internships and new grad software engineering roles is pretty much the same, except for full-time roles, you'll have more interviews. Roughly speaking, the process looks like this. Coding challenge or take-home project, recruiter chat, phone screen, maybe another phone screen, and then the on-site loop consisting of technical, system design, and behavioral rounds. There are a lot of resources out there on interviews, and I briefly touched upon them in my How I Learned to Code video, so go ahead and check those out. In the future, I might make a specific video on interviews. As you go through the various stages of the interview process, be sure to update your stage on your Coda doc. Part five, accept an offer. Congrats again. The hard work paid off, and you have a few offers to choose from. I'll make a more detailed video on what to look for in a company and how to pick the right opportunity. 
But in short, you'll want to balance compensation, location, potential for growth and learning, and how much fun you think you'll have. For internships, there'll be almost no room for negotiation, but for full-time jobs, definitely negotiate. I'll make a separate video on negotiation. Now, you can change your company stages to offer and marvel at all of your hard work. Pick one company you'd be excited to work at, accept the offer, and sit back and relax. This CodaDoc is functional in many ways, but it's also cathartic. It's like journaling your recruiting efforts and documenting your journey. You've come a long way. Duplicate my doc, but also create your own docs and try Coda for free to supercharge your productivity at coda.io slash This video is basically everything I told my brother when he was recruiting. If there's anything you take away, remember. One, it's a numbers game, so apply early and often. And two, be shameless. Grind for what you want and it'll all work out. That's all I have. Till next time, cheers.